Hope Campaign baptizes over 5,000 people in the northern region of Peru. OCI launches humanitarian appeal for drought and famine crisis affecting millions in Africa. ADRA Australia inaugurates Center of Excellence in Agriculture in Zimbabwe. Adventist World Radio brings hope beyond the borders of Africa. These and other inspiring stories, now on ANN News. Thousands of evangelistic centers served as the main places where the Adventist Church in northern Peru shared the Word of God. Over 5,000 people were baptized. Throughout the northern region, Adventists developed a caravan of hope featuring nights dedicated to evangelism as part of the Easter week program called The Last Victory. The result of these efforts was remarkable, with 5,048 people accepting Christ as their Savior and being baptized. Daniel Montalvan, the local president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, expressed gratitude to God for the significant triumphs achieved during the week. International evangelist Alejandro Bullon was part of the event, visiting multiple cities in the region and delivering impactful sermons in stadiums and coliseums. Over 70,000 individuals were reached with the message of salvation. When Christ comes to this earth, he will only find sheep and goats, saved or lost. There is no half lost. There is no more or less saved. Why? Either you say yes to Jesus, you open your heart to him, you give him your life. Or if you almost give your heart to Jesus, you are already lost. Indecision is destruction. That is why the Bible never tires of calling out, Today is the day of good news. Today is the day of salvation. The Center of Excellence in Montgomery, Zimbabwe, is a place of learning for farmers involved in the Engage Project, led by ADRA Australia. The initiative aims to improve the livelihood of 5,000 smallholder farmers and entrepreneurs across the African country. Welcome to the Center of Excellency here in Montgomery under Umkosa District. My name is Leo Maposa and I'm the one who does agronomy in this area. This place serves a purpose of demonstrating to local farmers how to grow to international standard different crops that are ex of export value. Uh, we are a demonstration uh, center uh, that serves the, the farmers around in Mkuza district and also we set up as a, as a prototype for smallholder farmers so that they can be able to replicate the same way that we are doing our, our crop production. We have a facility uh, which we call the aggregation center which is a cold chain uh, where farmers bring, smallholder farmers bring their produce and then it goes through the packaging and then we're able to send it to the market. We have two cold rooms uh, that, uh, that we are using, one as a receiving unit and the other one as a dispatching unit. These cold rooms are uh, where we hold the produce that comes from the farmer and then it goes through a process flow uh, that we, we follow whenever the produce is, whenever the product is brought from the, from the field. And then we then take that produce from the holding uh, cold room and then we put it through a pack shed. And then that's where we do all the grading and the packaging uh, and then from there we take it to the dispatching cold room. Some of the problems that farmers face uh, of post-harvest losses, 40 to 60 percent, it is said actually 40 to 60 percent uh, of the, the product that farmers grow in horticulture is lost after harvesting. The other common problems that farmers are faced with is uh, excessive supply of product into the market, where farmers take all of their product, they grow the same product, they take it at the same time to the market, and then it floods the market, therefore dropping the price on that product. And then they are not able to realize their profit because of that. So these are some of the, the facility was designed in such a way that farmers can come for a look and learn, learn good agronomical practices, learn uh, uh, integrated pest management uh, systems, uh, learn cropping uh, systems that they can implement in their own uh, production units. This facility is also open to farmers. I think primarily we are open to our district 
and, and, and beyond to serve our farmers, small water farmers, to come here for different trainings that will be rolling out. You know, whether it's in regards to markets, in regards to a select uh, product that can be grown, product lines, or in regards to just good agronomical practices that farmers, or it could be post-harvest handling. The Center of Excellency is there to also train farmers. Uh, train farmers in so many different things that they can take back home and be able to practice, replicate, and, and have an understanding when they are doing their own crop production. So we will be training farmers on the market, local market, export markets, just having them a brief understanding of the product lines that are suited for those markets. Uh, the second area that we'll be training farmers is uh, integrated pest management uh, systems and then also cropping systems, uh, post harvest handling. Those are some of the facets that we'll be training farmers, offering services to our farmers. They can come through here and then we are able to train them. We are working with uh, different partners, strategic partners that we're working with. Uh, one of the partners that we are working with is the Australian Aid and then we have the government of Zimbabwe through different ministries uh, that are coming and connecting with us. And then uh, we are at Zimbabwe and then we have got other players on the ground. We have got Apex, uh, we have uh, Agritex, we have uh, ZFU and a list of other players that, you know, even the community leaders uh, from Mgoza district. And all of these uh, teams are the teams that we are working with here. The amazing thing about this project is that uh, we are able to work with any farmer, whether a farmer which has started a day ago or farmers that have been in the game for a long, long time. So we are, we are able to integrate all those kind of farmers and then to equip them to work together to produce uh, to the best standard. Farming is not as difficult as, as you may think. Come for a look and learn here at the Center of Excellence and then we are able to show you simple methods of farming. For our smallholder farmers, what we are saying is that you can make use of the list that you have to produce to export standard. Uh, it, it could be even, even higher yield can, is possible from the smallest piece of land. So we can think of our farmers who have small lands like a 0.1, someone have got an acre land, someone who has got five hectares, depending where you are. You are, we are able to come and then we teach you and we are able to learn together how to utilize the resources that you have at the least cost possible and be able to produce to international standards or to produce to export standards. We journey to Eastern Europe, specifically Moldova. The tranquil community of Oakland Village was transformed by a special event that attracted Adventists from near and far corners of the Soroka district. Led by Pastor Ilya Stepanovich Liak, leader of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Moldova, the congregation celebrated a solemn baptismal ceremony. Two individuals, Vadim and Anna, expressed their joy and fervor in embracing faith, reminding attendees of the significance of choosing Christ. The baptism not only left a lasting impression on the participants, but also symbolize the unity of the church. Advent Health Kissimmee in Florida, United States, has expanded its facilities by adding new rooms to serve more patients seeking medical and surgical care. Advent Health is a Seventh-day Adventist nonprofit healthcare system dedicated to extending the healing ministry of Christ to communities. To watch the growth of this hospital in this fast-growing community and to be able to offer more services each and every year for the past several years has been one of the joys of my life. We have the blessing of being able to open progressive care unit beds, which is where we care for some of our sickest patients, and we know that their healing is helped by the presence and the nearness of loving friends and family members. Advent Health is dedicated to providing whole person care that's close to home. This expansion represents the culmination of a project that began almost 10 years ago. It is a privilege for me and for Advent Health to serve this community. Thousands of elders from the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the Inter-American region were honored for their commitment to volunteer service during the annual certification celebration. In a virtual ceremony, the elders were recognized for their dedicated work 
in over 23,000 congregations across the Inter-American region. Pastor Ailey Henry, regional president of the Adventist Church, expressed gratitude and praised the commitment of each leader in shepherding members and sharing the gospel message in their local communities. You are doing a very important job, but one that God has given you the power to do a magnificent ministry. The highlight of the celebration was the acknowledgement of over 18,000 elders, along with their spouses, who completed the comprehensive training program the previous year. This recognition demonstrates the positive impact elders have on churches and groups, offering spiritual support, moral guidance, and helping to strengthen community ties. This is the day to thank God for His ministry. Throughout the Inter-American region, there are approximately 40,000 elders. Leaders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church announced plans to offer the certification program to deacons and deaconesses through video and audio messages, aiming to reach every city, village, and region. We will also be working to involve deacons, deaconesses, elders, and of course, also our pastors. In a groundbreaking move, Penang Adventist Hospital and Penang Football Club in Malaysia have joined forces to revolutionize player welfare. As the team gears up for the next season, the Adventist Hospital steps in as the go-to medical provider, ensuring peak performance on the field. In Penang, a new era in sports medicine unfolds as the local Adventist Hospital and Penang Football Club unite. The hospital's century of healing meets the football team's drive for excellence, setting a new standard in player care. Under the guidance of Dr. Chow Zilun, players undergo rigorous checkups at the Adventist Hospital's wellness clinic, ensuring they're primed for success. Throughout the season, the hospital stands ready to provide top-tier medical support, reinforcing their commitment to player well-being. As Penang Adventist Hospital officials express gratitude for the partnership, both organizations embark on a journey to redefine sports medicine. With every match played, every victory celebrated, the bond between the hospital and the football team grows stronger, setting the stage for a future where compassion and excellence go hand in hand. Has anyone received the mark of the beast? How can we ensure that we don't accidentally accept it? Find answers in this discussion with Pastor Ted Wilson, president of the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Church discovered insights from the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation about the pivotal choice between following God's word or man-made ideologies. Hello, friends. As you may know, we're currently going through the book, The Great Controversy, and are currently finishing chapter 25, titled, God's Law Immutable. The image to the beast represents that form of apostate Protestantism which will be developed when the Protestant churches shall seek the aid of the civil power for the enforcement of their dogmas. But what is this mark of the beast? Well, if we keep reading in Revelation 14 and verse 12, we gain a clue by looking at a group that does not receive this mark. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. In the Great Controversy, we read the following. Since those who keep God's commandments are placed in contrast with those that worship the beast and his image and receive his mark, it follows that the keeping of God's law on the one hand, and its violation on the other will make the distinction between the worshipers of God and the worshipers of the beast. The special characteristic of the beast, and therefore of his image, is the breaking of God's commandments. To watch this full episode and many more, visit our official YouTube channel. Countries like Zambia, Zimbabwe, and Malawi are facing a devastating crisis of drought and famine due to the lack of rainfall. 
Zambia has declared a state of national disaster with over a million families affected by the devastation of crops. Right now, humanitarian assistance and tons of food are needed to combat hunger. OCI is reaching out to these communities to shed light on the situation and seek urgent help. Steve Dickman, over to you. Hi friends, I'm Steve Dickman with Outpost Centers International. I'm here today in the country of Zambia and uh, we are highlighting and actually bringing awareness to a need here. This region of Zambia right near Riverside Farms has been affected, severely affected by lack of rain and drought. We're standing in a field of maize Thousands of people, actually millions of people in Zambia depend on maize as a staple of their diet. But the crops of maize and other things they produce here as primary food for their families has been affected by a drought. No rain or little rain for a long period of time. You can see that the maize here is in really bad shape. It's not going to produce a crop. Thousands and even hundreds of thousands of families across this region are going to be hungry. I'm here today with Gilbert, Gilbert and his daughter, Esther. Thank you, Gilbert, for helping us today. Tell us about how this is affecting your family and this community. Hmm. This thing is it's a hard thing because right up now, we Zambian, we are just depending on, on maize. Maize, we are making shima with it. But right up now, all the maize, they, they are real dead. So we don't have anything that we can put on in our stomach. So you heard it. Gilbert says, the lack of maize, many people are going to be hungry. Friends, today is an opportunity for us to help these families and others in this region to have something to eat. Outpost Centers International, working with Cross-Cultural Ministry and Riverside Farms, is attempting to raise awareness and raise funds to purchase in advance of the real critical time for this drought and famine to purchase ahead some maize, some beans, some ground nuts, so that people can have something to eat here. Friends, thank you for what you're doing to help Outpost Centers International and through our ministries, these people in this part of Zambia. You can go to our website, outpostcenters.org. You can get involved. You can support the families in this region. You can help someone today. Reiterating, to donate, visit outpostcenters.org forward slash Zambia. Volunteers from a United States-based Adventist mobile clinic provided free health care to the Haitian community in the Bahamas, ensuring medical assistance for the largest ethnic group on the island of New Providence. The clinic, organized by health care ministries in collaboration with three local churches and Pastor Wilson Isnord, served over 400 residents in Nassau free of charge. This initiative is part of an evangelism campaign aimed at the Haitian community on the island. We register them from one to whatever number that we have because they all come from different, for different situations, okay? And we have different of our nurses, geriatric nurses, pediatric nurses, and you know, like I said, different specialties and nurses as well and, and, and physicians. During the clinics, health issues such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and high cholesterol were identified. Dr. Daniel Mondesier, originally from Haiti and founder of Healthcare Ministries in New York, emphasized the importance of healthcare services, considering the difficult situation faced by Haitians. Activities also included lectures on self-care and preventive health. Giving them is one thing. Showing them how to do, how to take care of themselves is another thing, okay? Because remember, Jesus taught us how to be a fish. He just doesn't give us, but he showed us how to get it. So this is what we do. Volunteers from the three local churches also assisted during the clinics, including Jerry Anatius from the Ebenezer Adventist Church. He stressed the importance of health clinics as part of Christian duty. I was just also doing God's work by helping people in general, by making sure that they're doing well, that they're feeling okay, and that they get the health care that they need. From the lands of West Africa comes an incredible story. Imagine a region with a rich oral tradition, limited technology, and distant places. In this challenging scenario, Adventist World Radio reaches hearts, and the power of the gospel combined with communication transforms lives and brings salvation. Communication has been one of our priorities. Then radio stations take the message of hope to remote places, reaching people like Nkurma. We also have a television channel, Hope TV Ghana, 
In 2009, we started our first media center with a fully equipped studio at the division headquarters and another media center at Babcock University. In 2009, my mother took ill and she had stroke and I had to care for her. Then now, I stumbled into a channel called Hope Channel and in it, I began to receive messages that are strange to me. It was this content which brought comfort to Laraba's heart. After her mom's death, she wanted to know about the state of the dead. She soon discovered the hope of eternal life. The questions of my heart were met. And the more I listened, the more I got encouraged, the more I believed, the more my faith increased. Today, I am a living testimony in my family that Jesus Christ has come to save us. Once a year, Mendoza, Argentina becomes the epicenter of worldwide moto tourism, attracting motorcycle enthusiasts from around the globe. Members of the Advanced Motorcycle Ministry, AMM, participated, turning the ride into a mission of solidarity and hope. During the traditional event, a top Cerro Cristo Redentor in the Argentine Andes, a team of Adventist motorcyclists surprised 3,000 participants. With the support of partners, they distributed breakfast and books free of charge, nourishing not only bodies, but also souls, conveying a message of hope in challenging times. Additionally, AMM motorcyclists also took part in the Pathfinder Compagnie, demonstrating commitment to service to others. A poignant moment was the baptism of one of the participants. The Adventist motorcycle ministry originated in the USA and is now present in various countries. This ministry exemplifies how a passion for two wheels combined with compassion can be an effective tool for evangelism. We are embarking on a journey to Uzbekistan, a country in Central Asia. In the throes of addiction, Vladislav found himself ensnared by the relentless grip of gambling. But amidst the shadows of despair, a beacon of hope emerged, a learning center that offered him a lifeline to redemption. Vladislav was deep into gambling in Uzbekistan. He organized poker tournaments and frequently got into trouble for not being able to pay his debts. He argued with his wife, Alonya, a lot. Sometimes Vladislav wouldn't come home for three days at a time. Additionally, their daughter had health problems. Doctors advised them to travel to South Korea for treatment. While they were there, Vladislav got himself into the same gambling problems. Upon their return, their daughter's health had slightly improved, so they enrolled her into a local learning center. She loved coming to the learning center run by Adventists. The center is attached to an Adventist church building. One day when picking up their daughter, Vladislav and Alonia met the pastor and his wife. They invited them over to share a meal. They did this for a few times and the families developed a friendship. The pastor and his wife never pushed anything about religion on them. Vladislav and Alonia increasingly grew curious about Adventist, so they started visiting the church. They began coming more and more often until eventually they accepted Jesus into their hearts and were baptized. Through God's grace, Vladislav stopped gambling and his relationship with his wife is better than ever. The couple wants others who may be struggling to know that there is hope. Vladislav has found a unique way to connect with people within the community. Every week, he goes to the church and cooks for people to eat and socialize. Rice pilav, known as plav in Uzbekistan, is a traditional and favorite food here. Vladislav makes it in huge batches to feed everyone. These community gatherings started with just a few people, but have grown to more than 150 people every Sunday. Friendships have developed, and other social activities are often planned over a plate of rice pilaf. This is my dream with my wife, that more people come to church. It's our community. We want to share this blessing with people. In our case, our life experience is the best preaching. Our testimony is better than any sermon. If it wasn't for the Learning Center, Vladislav may have never developed this community that transformed his life. 
The Learning Center now has the opportunity to grow. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will help expand the Learning Center into an elementary school. They will need new classrooms and materials to take on this next chapter. The school will be located in Tashkent, the capital of Uzbekistan. More than two million people live in this city, making it a huge opportunity. Please pray for this project so that others may find community and children will get a quality education. Thank you for supporting projects like this. Thank you for joining us as we review the latest stories of hope and wholeness taking place throughout the Global Seventh-day Adventist Church. Present in over 200 countries, the denomination seeks to be the hands and feet of Christ through its members, leaders, administrative headquarters, institutions, and support ministries. You can access other good news by joining the official channels of the Seventh-day Adventist Church on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and explore the ANN website on Adventist.news. Share your faith story and leave a prayer request on our channels. We have a team praying for you 24-7. Before I say goodbye, I would like to leave you with excellent news recorded in the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Study the Bible daily to learn other wonderful promises of hope. Until next time, God bless.